Hello friends, welcome to our broadcast Limitless Life. I am your host Larry Hutton and I'm thrilled to have you with me again today. Uh, we just have such a good time on this program and I love hearing back from the partners. I was just uh, reading an email got from a partner last night and saying how much it just, she said it just brings a smile to her face whenever she tunes on to, t tunes into Limitless Life. And that just blesses you, you know, just to hear people are enjoying the word and enjoying learning how to live a better life and, and learning how to be happy and fulfilled in life and uh, all the good things that God's word teaches us. And so uh, the, the fun thing about this and the good thing about this is this isn't anything to do with religion. Uh, no, this is relationship. You know, the religions of the world, they all serve dead gods. But Christians, they serve the Lord Jesus Christ who rose from the dead. He's alive and well. And, and now uh, we get to live with him and rule and reign in life with him and walk in his blessings and uh, just have a wonderful life. And so that's what this program is all about. And I'm glad you're with us. If this is your first time, welcome. Great to have you. Uh, we're just going to get back into what we've been studying. We always take subjects on this program that are relevant to your life now. What can you do now to have health in your body? What can you do now to have peace and, of mind and not be driven by anger and depression and stress and worry and all those things? What can you do uh, financially to be financially free. See, all of these subjects are covered in the Bible and they're covered in such a way to let you know God wants you totally blessed in every one of those areas. So whatever area God talks about, when Jesus came and died for you and paid the penalty of sin, it took care of all the curses that came in as a result of, as a result of sin. So if you've ever read back in Deuteronomy where it talks about the blessings of the law under the Mosaic law and then the curses of the law, when you read the blessings, those blessings were here before the law of Moses was ever given. And those blessings are still for us today in the new covenant, better covenant established on better promises. Now we're redeemed from the curse of having to keep the law and then all the curses that come in with the curse. And if you look at those curses, the curses actually did not come in as a result of the law. The curses came in as a result of the fall. When Adam fell and sin entered the world, that's when the curse of sickness and, and pain and, and despair and discouragement and oppression and bad temper and uh, poverty and lack, all, all curses came in as a result of sin. Well, Jesus redeemed you and me. If you're a Christian, Jesus redeemed you and me from sin. Uh, he said, don't let sin lord it over you anymore. So we're freed from sin, he said in Romans. So thank God I'm freed from sin, but I'm also freed from every curse that came in as a result of sin. Hallelujah to Jesus. <laughs> I'm so thrilled. Praise God. All right. Well, let's pick this back up in... Uh, in Isaiah 53, we started doing a series. I titled it Mental and Emotional Freedom. Uh, this will actually be our third week. We've already gone two complete weeks, 10 programs already. So if you haven't had time to go back and listen to them, uh, they're in the archives. Um, our TV manager tries to put them on YouTube and our website as well. Sometimes that takes a little longer, but, but uh, you can watch them on Gospel Truth TV in the archives as well. But uh, we're going to pick up in, uh, in Isaiah 53. It's our foundation text that we use uh, whenever we've been teaching this series on mental and emotional freedom. Jesus came to redeem us in every realm. He came to redeem our spirit. He came to redeem our mind and emotions. He came to redeem our finances. He came to redeem our physical health. He came to redeem us in every area. God bless the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why? Because, well, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I can say I'm redeemed because of what Jesus did. Hallelujah. All right. So let's pick back up. This is our foundation text uh, for what we're teaching on the mental and emotional realm right now. Isaiah 53 verses four and five. And it says in verse four, surely that Jesus bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now, remember, we're talking about emotions. We're talking about feelings. 
and how we have been redeemed so that we don't have to be yo-yo Christians. You know what I mean by that? Up one day and down the next. Up one day and down the next. We don't have to be roller coaster Christians. You know what I mean by that? All over the place with our emotions. One day we're happy. Other day we're sad. Next day we're depressed. Next day we're uh, thrilled. Next day we're all flying off the handle with bad temper and anger problems. The next day we're at peace. We don't have to live that way. We get to live in peace and joy 24-7, 365. I remember a preacher one time heard me say that one time, and he said, oh, come on, get real. That's, he didn't say it to me. I found out he said it to a friend of mine. The friend told me. But he said, oh, come on, get real. You can't just live free in the emotional realm all the time. You just can't live in peace and joy all the time. And I thought, oh, my goodness, why? If Jesus paid the price on Calvary, that would be... If that preacher said, oh, come on, you just can't live free from sin. I'm going to have to go commit adultery once in a while. Or, you know, I'm going to have to go steal once in a while. Or I'm going to have to go commit murder once in a while. You know, you just can't live free from sin all the time. <laughs> if he had said that, the other preacher probably would have smacked him. Said, what's wrong with you? <laughs> well, I want to smack him when he says you can't live uh, free from depression. Or you can't live free from stress. Or you can't live free from bad temper and anger. I want to smack him. I'll smack anybody because you're, you're coming against what Jesus said. Right here, Jesus and the Word are one, by the way. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And then it became flesh. It took on the name Jesus. And so we're talking about what Jesus did for us here. In Isaiah 53, Jesus bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now remember the word bore is a, a substitutionary word in the Hebrew. He did it for us, not with us. He did it so we don't have to. Just like He bore our sins. So you don't have to. So when sin tempts you, you can resist it. Why? Because the Bible said you are righteous. That righteousness is more powerful than that temptation of sin. So if you yield to righteousness, you won't yield to the sin. Same way here, Jesus bore our griefs and carried our sorrows and then gave us his peace. We've already found that out in previous programs, but we'll pick that back up as well. He bore our grief. You realize grief is a feeling. It's an emotion. He bore our sorrows. And I'm just going to remind you, looking at the Hebrew definition of grief, the word grief means sickness. It means disease, so that takes care of physical problems, doesn't it? But it also means calamity. It means grief, which is an emotion, a feeling. And it means anxiety. So that would cover grief, worry, which is huge in society today, stress, that's huge, panic attacks. That's big all over the place. So that the word grief covers those uh, emotions. And then the word sorrows, it means anguish, sorrow, and pain. And that pain is includes physical, but it also includes emotional pain. So Jesus bore my anguish, my sorrow, my pain. That, that covers hurt feelings. That covers uh, anger, bad temper. It covers depression. It covers oppression. Uh, hopelessness, guilt, shame, um, frustration, all those gamut of emotions. So when you take these two he Hebrew words together, you've got the whole gamut of every negative emotion that you and I have to feel in this world while we're here in this life. These are emotions that try and make us feel a certain way. And Jesus said he bore them for us. So that means when these emotions come against me, I don't have to let them stay. If Jesus bore them, it's just, it's a temptation to feel that way, just like a temptation to sin, and you resist it because you're righteous. Well, you, you resist depression, you resist guilt, you resist shame, you resist bad temper and anger problems because you have the peace of God and the joy of God on the inside. That's God's emotions that he wants you to have. The only time you should feel anger is toward the devil and toward your enemy, you, Satan, the evil one, the wicked one, Right? and unrighteous things, but not people. Remember, the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So you have to remember who your enemy is. He works through people just like God works through people. God's using my vessel right now to minister to people. But the devil does the same thing, and we need to know that because when the devil works through people and ugly and, and does terrible things, we need to understand, well, you know, the person, if they'd have been in their right mind, they wouldn't have done that. So let's, let's look at this a little closer now. Jesus bore my grief, my sorrows, my depression, my stress, my worry, 
my hurt feelings, my guilt, my shame, my bad temper. He bore those things. And what he bore, I need not bear. Come on now. And you ought to say that right now. What he bore, go ahead and say it. What he bore, I need not bear. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, he bore it for me, so I'm not going to. If he bore it for me, I'm not bearing it. <clears throat> he bore my, my calamity, my grief, my anxiety, my anguish, my sorrow, my emotional pain. He bore all of that for me. And then remember last time we were in Galatians 5.22, which we saw uh, when the Holy Spirit moved inside of us, he brought nine pieces of fruit. Two of those fruit I call feeling fruit, emotional fruit. Peace and joy make you feel good. They're part of the emotional realm, peace and joy, and they make your feelings feel good. Well, we have those. We talked about this last time, but peace and joy are emotional fruit, and they're not seasonal fruit, not like oranges or grapefruit or figs or different fruit that you could talk about in different places of the world. Peace and joy are not seasonal. You have them every time you get out of bed. We even talked about that one program where you can get up on the right side of the bed for the rest of your life. I do. I do that. It's, I'm, I'm living proof you can do that. I've been doing it for a long time, for many, many years now. And so you, and you can ask my wife. You ever see my wife ask her, does Larry ever have down days, ever have depressed days, stress-filled days, strife-filled days, fly off the handle, get his feelings hurt, filled. Does he have, ever have those days? And you know what she tell you? She said, no, he has those moments because every one of us are going to face the moment, but he never builds a monument. <laughs> I have a moment. Everybody, Jesus said in the world, you're going to have the tribulation, the test, the trials. We'll, we'll look at that. But uh, we don't have to allow them to stay. We get to choose. Choose life. Glory to God. <clears throat> so uh, I'm so thrilled that I have the fruit of peace and the fruit of joy in me. We saw that when the Holy Spirit moves in us, he's moved, he's moved in to dwell there. So if somebody says, <laughs> they don't realize this, but if somebody says, boy, I lost my peace. No, you didn't lose the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the one that brought God's peace inside you. So if you lost your peace, uh, then you lost the Holy Ghost. <laughs> no, God brought his peace in to make it your peace. And so now... It's not the way the world gives. Remember Jesus said, in fact, let's just turn over to John 14, 27. Let's look at that one on this show. That would be a good one to look at. Jesus said he gave us his peace. And uh, so we don't just have natural peace anymore. We have a peace that passes all understanding. Praise God. Let's look here in uh, John chapter 14 and verse 27. He said, Jesus is talking here. If you have a red letter edition Bible, you can see that. If not, then you'd have to go back and look, see who's talking. But whether you have an electronic Bible or a leather Bible, you can see Jesus is talking here. He says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not the way the world gives. I give it to you. So Jesus lets us know right now this peace that, that he's bringing us from God because remember, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. So Jesus has given us his peace. Then he's given us God's peace. So, man, this is unshakable peace. This isn't roller coaster peace or yo-yo peace, man. This is stable, steady, even keel peace, man. Right through the storm, staying up peace. <laughs> Glory to God. Peace I leave with you. My peace, I, not as the world. Well, how does the world? Well, the world gives you peace when everything's peaceful. So in other words, okay, if I have enough money, uh, I, I can be at peace. You know, not have to get all worried and stressed. Or, you know, well, if, if the political scene is going the way I want it to go, then okay, then uh, I can be at peace and rest. Uh, that's not the kind of peace Jesus gives you. Uh, or, you know, oh man, if I could just get rid of this pain or this sickness or disease, then I could have peace. No, you can have peace right through a storm. Um, people are treating you ugly and bad, whether it's family members or other people, worker, co-workers, whatever. You can have peace no matter how p bad people treat you. And so Jesus is saying, I'm not giving you peace the way the world does. See, the world thinks, okay, if there's no, no 
uh, tornadoes, no hurricanes, no typhoons, or if there's no wars, or if there's no terrorist activity, or if there's no this, then I can have peace. But otherwise, oh man, oh man, I got to worry and stress and depressed. And no, you don't. No, you don't. Jesus doesn't give you the peace that way. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Now look what he goes on to say. Don't let, King James says, let not. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. Wow. That's a pretty big, strong statement. Don't let. Don't let your heart be troubled. By the way, um, when Jesus said he gives you his peace here, if you look it up, it includes prosperity, even financially. But if you look it up, it also means peace, mental and emotional, quietness, rest. So it's talking about tranquility. It's talking about being a rest. You know, I, I was raised in Odessa, Florida. My dad built a house back in 1958 on a lake called Church Lake, of all places. <laughs> and um, it's in Odessa, Florida. And I was raised there. And it was so amazing to me when I've even gone there in recent times back to that place. You can walk down to the lake and my dad had built a dock and you can walk out there and just sit on the dock looking out at the water. And it's just like tranquil. It's just like rest. In fact, I can do that from the, from the house, you know, with 100, well, 50 yards, whatever, from the lake. You can sit in the family room, living room, and there's this big picturesque window facing the lake, and you can just sit in the living room and stare down at the lake. And some, for some reason, see, God knew what he was doing. For some reason, it's just, it's, a, it's an atmosphere of peace. It's an atmosphere of rest and tranquility. I love that, but I found out, you know what? I don't have to be there. I can be right in the midst of a, a bunch of people treating you ugly and mean and saying bad things about you, and yet I can still operate in peace because Jesus didn't give me peace the way the world gives it to me, right? Peace, this word peace means peace, quietness, rest. So you and I have God's peace that gives us quietness and rest right in the midst of any storm. And then he says, let not your heart be troubled. So this word heart is actually used figuratively here for the thoughts and the feelings. Uh, it's the mind. It's the emotional realm that it's talking, dealing with here. So when it says, don't let your heart be troubled, it's saying, don't let your thoughts, your feelings, your mind, your emotions be troubled. All right. All right. The word troubled in the Greek means to stir or to agitate. Kind of like a, like a washing ma machine uh, will stir or agitate the clothes to get them clean. That's what this word is like, is, is to stir or agitate or to be troubled. Uh, and when you think about it, when you are stressed, you are agitated. Um, when you are worried or, or depressed or discouraged, your, your emotions are stirred. Uh, your thoughts and feelings are all just stirred up. You know, when you're offended, when your feelings are hurt, when, you, when you're angry and short-tempered, your emotions are being agitated like that washing machine. Um, Jesus said, don't let that happen. So that means you and I must be able to make a choice. And then he goes on in the verse and says, don't let yourself be afraid. I looked up that word. It means to be timid or afraid of something. We don't have to be timid or intimidated. That's another good emotion or feeling you and I have been redeemed from. We don't have to be intimidated by others or timid when it comes to standing on the promise of God. I remember the first time uh, when intimidation, it's a feeling just like all these other negative emotions, trying to get you in fear. It's a type of fear. I remember um, back in the early 80s when I was traveling with the late Kenneth E. Hagan, who's in heaven now, and we were at a big rally, 10,000 people, and, and Brother Hagan had, had asked me to lead the praise and worship with the other singers, and, and it was my first time doing it. And I remember before I walked out on the platform, I looked out 
who was sitting out in the congregation, man, you had a lot of well-known preachers and, and even people that led praise and worship for big ministries. And I'd never done that until this night, you know, and, and intimidation tried to come on me. And I thought to myself and I thought, no, wait a minute. You know what? God, you've called me. You've anointed me. Uh, you saw fit through the man of God to ask me to do this. And so, Lord, I'm just going to trust you that you know what you're doing. <laughs> you know what that is, don't you? Simple, childlike faith. And I just, I cast that care, which is what the Bible tells us to do. I cast that care on the Lord. And I just got up there and I just refused to be intimidated. I'm not going to be intimidated. You know, 99.9% .9 of the time, those people out there aren't trying to intimidate you anyway. How dare you get up there and lead praise and worship? I could do a better job than that. They're not sitting there thinking that anyway. And if they, even if they were, then we'll let the judge deal with the ones that are out there trying to judge you, right? But I just cast it. It was like I got up there with such confidence. You know why? My confidence was in Jesus. My confidence was in what the Lord had done for me. He said, don't let your emotions be afraid. Intimidations is a part of fear, so don't let. So I just chose, you know, I'm not going to let. So I just got up there and I acted confident, not in myself, but I acted confident in Jesus and what he's called me to do, what he's anointed me to do, the gifts he's put in me. And you can do the same thing. Every one of us have different gifts. Even if you're not a preacher, you have gifts in you and I need you. You heard me, Larry Hutton needs you. You may be thinking, oh, Brother Larry, you don't need me. I need you because you're the one helping set me free. No, no, listen, you're part of the body of Christ. You know what the Bible says? The Bible said that one part of the body can't say to another part of the body, we have no need of you. I don't care how uh, seemingly small or insignificant your part is. You may think it is. Oh, no, there's going to be people that God speaks to through you that I'll never see this side of heaven and that no other preacher will see this side of heaven. And God will use the gifts he's put in you to minister to somebody. And when you get to heaven and you have all these rewards laid up for you that I'm not getting because of what you did, you're going to get because of what you did because I couldn't do it. I don't have your gifts. I don't have your callings. We need each other. And don't you ever feel intimidated. I don't care if you're another preacher. Don't feel intimidated by what, what are called so big name preachers. I never get intimidated by anybody. I don't care if they're 10 times, 100 times more well known with me at their ministries or 100 times larger than mine. I love them, bless them. But guess what? They can't do what I'm called to do. They can't use the gifts that God's put in me for them. No, God gave them different gifts. So I've got to do what I'm called to do. And besides that, they only see in part and know in part. That means there's parts you know that I don't know and they don't know. There's parts I know that you don't know and they don't know. There's parts they know that I don't know and you don't know. What am I saying? We all need each other. Man, I, I, I know that wasn't part of my message, but I just felt led by the Spirit of God just to share that because we need to understand God needs you. God needs you. I need you. If I need you. We need you. The body of Christ needs you. We need each other. Praise God. So don't let your feelings be hurt and angry and, and your emotions be agitated. And don't let yourself be intimidated or stirred up or afraid as well. Uh, the Amplified says it this way. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Isn't that interesting? I love that. Stop allowing yourself. Stop it. <laughs> Stop allowing yourselves to be in, uh, agitated and disturbed. Oh, that just disturbs me. Well, don't let it. We don't have to let it. Don't allow yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful Worry is fearful. Stress is fearful. Don't allow yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Mm -mm, don't allow. Now, I, I like this. The two things it says here in the Amplified, stop allowing yourselves. So may, may, maybe we have been allowing ourselves to be stressed and depressed and mad and angry and upset and all those different emotions. Maybe, we've, maybe we have, but stop. 
We can make a choice, can't we? Stop allowing yourselves, and then it goes on later in the verse, and do not permit yourselves. So not only can I stop myself from those negative emotions ruling me, but now I can not permit them from up. Do not permit yourselves. Isn't that good? That means, listen, if Jesus said, don't let, we must be able to not let. Right? I mean, come on, I, that's a no-brainer. I know it's simple, simple math here or simple ABCs or simple whatever, but this is, this is simple. Jesus said, don't let. So if he said, don't let, then we don't have to let. And I'm going to show you, uh, since we're out of time this program, I'm going to show you in the next program uh, why he said this. Because a lot of people, they try not to let and it doesn't work. And then they, you know, think, well, you know, I don't, I guess it's just not going to work for me. But I'm going to show you the next program. We're right here in this passage of scripture. I want to show you what the empowerment is that he's given you and I. You may be thinking, Grace, well, of course, everything is based on what Jesus did at the cross, the finished work of Jesus, so our faith has to be in grace. But I want to be more specific and you show you a work of grace that you can attach your faith to. And then when you do that, you are actually empowered not to let these things bother you. We don't have to let them, friends. Jesus said, stop allowing yourself. Do not permit yourselves to feel this way. So we get to make the choice. That's good news, isn't it? Praise God. All right. Well, we're out of time. Thank you for joining us and thank you for supporting the program. I know a lot of you have been sending in financial offerings just to help us. Some of your monthly offerings. That's wonderful. Thank you, partners. You're helping us reach other people. And, and if you're being blessed by the program and haven't sent anything in, man, send it in because then we're not able just to help you. We're able to help others. And that's what it's all about. Praise God. Love you. I call you blessed. We'll see you next program. Do you ever feel like you're riding a non-stop emotional roller coaster through life? Do you want to stop the seemingly endless ups and downs and rounds and rounds? Then it's time to learn what God has to say about getting your feet and your emotions back on solid ground. It's all too easy to let life's events, experiences, and circumstances dictate how we feel, speak, and act. But God gave us a much better way to live. Larry Hutton's life-changing book, Internal Affairs, and CD series, Free From Me, will give you the Bible answers and show you how to keep every negative emotion under complete control, all the time, in every situation. You will learn how to overcome all your negative emotions and live in peace all the time. To order Eternal Affairs and Free From Me, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-9673. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD. 